We apologize, we're running a little bit behind schedule, so we'll make this quick. Um, my name is Hannah Pooler, I'm from the USA. I'm an intern at INEB in Bangkok and have been participating in the Curl Summer School. Uh, my name is Tia Power. I'm from Sweden and I work with the Right Line Good Work Foundation. I've also been taking part in the Curls Summer School. Uh, and we will be your uh, MCs for today. We have a very packed and exciting day in front of us. Uh, I want to just remind you of a few things. If you have not signed in yet, please do. Also, please fill up the seats in the front, but you've done a quite good job of that already. And the bell that you just heard, we will use that to call you back in after breaks and lunch. So when you hear the bell, Three times, you know it's time to get in back to the room. Um, so just a quick run through of this morning. We will start with a flute performance by Narapat. We'll be playing the Thai contemporary flute. And then we'll have a lecture by Raul Montenegro. After that, we will have a short presentation by the Curls Summer School. And then we'll have a quick break, come back for our first panel discussion and World Cafe Modern by Walt. So yeah, without further ado, Narva.
Hello, good morning. Good morning. I have been prepared for the calls. <laughs> um, first of all, really, I uh, acknowledge all organizers of this fantastic meeting. Um, I think that all we are here for learning uh, one from each other, and this is a fantastic meeting. Um, I will try to, to explain some, some things. Some of them are a little bit controversial. Uh, this is the title. Um, uh, I work uh, in a church uh, campus photo of the Ryan Life College. This is located in the University of Cordoba in Argentina. It is one of the oldest universities in Latin America. We have four centuries of work. And um, I, uh, particularly, I'm uh, a professor in the Faculty of Psychology in our university, where I teach uh, human evolutionary biology. Thus, um, uh, this presentation is thinking particularly, uh, not only with uh, uh, the issues that we are working in different countries, but particularly with uh, the campus of our college uh, in, in Argentina. These are the remaining uh, campuses. Uh, of the Valley Library College in Lund, uh, in Bonn, Addis Ababa, Port Arthur, California, Bolivia, uh, India, and of course uh, Thailand. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this is uh, really a very interesting and very important family of people working all over the world. But um, we try to, to start. First of all, the human experiment. From my point of view, we are a failed experiment. Mm -hmm. Our speech is, is condemned because I think um, our brain is really a bad thing. Some more, some important issues. One, Homo sapiens, this is the name that Linné uh, provided to us, began a species in Africa. We are all from uh, African origin. Uh, 100 50, uh, 200,000 years ago. This is our beginning. Number two, we had generation number 5,000. This is important to understand that we are the generation number 5,000. Since our beginning as species, um, we have some basic patterns of uh, genetically defined behavior. That means that there is some kind of behaviors that are contained in, in our ADN, our genes. Mm -hmm. um, the most important are territorialism, aggression, and dominancy. And all, all of them produce uh, the current system of uh, social hierarchies. Number four, and this is the most important thing, and this is the center of our experiment, since our beginning, humans can accumulate, I uh, underline, we can accumulate cultural information in the brain, particularly in the new value and value, which are the most recent uh, um, uh, parts of the brain. Mm -hmm. And this is our experiment. There is no species now uh, in the remaining biodiversity having this capacity. There is no species having the capability of accumulating information, generation after generation. So this, I said that this is our experiment. Yeah? And this is really uh, a very important thing to understand, that uh, all remaining species around us don't have this particular, particular property, particular issue. Number five, each generation and their individuals have in average more information than previous generations. This is very important. That means that if we have 
5,000 generations, each generation has more information than the previous one. Number six, each new generation in average has a bigger ecological analysis and growth in consumption patterns than the previous one. That means that we are changing or increasing our consumption generation after generation. This is also a big story. We're not solely increasing information. Our rate of damage increases with us. Each generation is worse than the previous one. And this is a very strange and dangerous experiment. Number seven, the growing content of uh, cultural information produces change in behaviors. This is a very important thing. We have 5,000 generations, but in each generation, we are changing our behaviors. The behaviors of our current generation is totally different from the previous one. And the previous one is totally different from the previous. This is also part of this period. We are changing all the time. And number eight, and this is a very, very important issue, in terms of behavior, we are unpredictable. Absolutely unpredictable. Nobody can say that we will do this or that because we are unpredictable. Why? Because we have all the accumulated information of 5,000 generations. Number 10, our cultural energies are, uh, you know, associated with inequity. This is also our experience. Um, what is the characteristic of uh, human species is the lack of equity. That means that we have one extreme rich people, in the other extreme we have poor people. Number 11, to the contrary, all remaining living species predominantly have inherited behaviors. Mm -hmm. For this reason, uh, rats, spiders, don't organize meetings. <laughs> They live with inherited behaviors. We are the solely species that is creating new behaviors in each generation. Number 12, in terms of behaviors, such non-human species are predictable. This is a very important thing. We are unpredictable. But if you are walking in a tropical forest or in a uh, semi-arid land with five universities, all the speeches that take part in this big show of biodiversity are predictable. Thus, they can be arranged between them because each of them are predictable. And who live together in highly biodiverse ecosystems. And this is the key, biodiverse ecosystems. Uh, consequently, one, being humans unpredictable in terms of behaviors, a situation which is, of, of course, aggravated by the lack of equity, which we need to have in mind this all, all the time. 80% of the population live in difficult situations. And when 20% is the people that live in uh, luxury and having all the things they would like to have. Um, that's we have a problem. We cannot be adapted to the functioning of highly biodiverse ecosystem because we are not predictable. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, very difficult to live uh, in a mix of predictable and non-predictable <coughs> species. Number two, our species simplify natural ecosystems and destroy them. Mm -hmm. We can consider ourselves, and this is uh, using the words of uh, Edward Wilson. Uh, we are mainly responsible for the six uh, big paths of extinctions in planet Earth, and maybe one of the worst in terms of the short time used for destroying. Even each of the previous um, uh, 
asteroids that collide the Earth, long times have been involved, but we are only efficient in killing everything. And we insist, and we insist, we are very, very efficient in killing. Death is closely related to humans. We are factories of killing. Nature, uh, this is a, you know, it's a very old word. In fact, talking in technical terms, ecosystem with higher diversity survived during almost uh, near 5,000 uh, million years <coughs> and resisted previous five huge uh, spas of extinction. One of these spas of extinction is responsible why we have now a meeting in Bangkok. It was uh, 65 million years ago when a big uh, meteorite collided Earth in the current area of um, uh, the Caribbean. And until this, reptiles were the boss, the big chief of the planet. Since these big collisions, humans or the pre-humans appeared. Uh, two main things explain how uh, uh, living organisms, which is biodiversity, survive. One is a sigmoid curve. We need to, to, to see this curve. This curve explains why life survived during more than 4,800 million years. We are talking of uh, carrying capacity, we are talking of uh, limits, we are talking that most of the species and ecosystems respected the current capacities of uh, such environment. That is, each species do not exceed the current capacity, cap, this is in the, uh, uh, in the different equations, of the system for being alive. That means that if you have mm, thousands of species, these species work, live, but anti as limits. Limit is the key. If we don't have limits, we are in collapse. Hmm? I will repeat this. If we don't have limits, we are creating day by day the collapse. And the second curve is the hyperbolic ladder. It sounds a very strange name, but sigmoid and hyperbolic ladder explain how life survived within more than five or near five thousand million years. In each natural ecosystem, there exist thousands, thousands, biodiversity is thousands of living species, ranging from dominant species to more common, and rare species carrying different ecological niches. And usually we talk of ecological niches is all the things that a species do in one ecosystem. Usually it's an hyperbolic, but we will talk about this. Um, and what is the characteristic of uh, all this process of evolution in Earth was the long food chain strategy. And we need to underline this, long food chain strategies. Mm -hmm. And this is the cool, this is the equilateral the hyperbola, and I really appreciate your contribution, because before it was an empty, uh, empty slide. Uh, this could explain also uh, why uh, life survived so many times. You know, you have dominant species in this side and round one in this side. For one economist, a traditional economist, this group is a bad thing because our economists solely prefer dominant species. But we survive it because these rare species, when the environment change, turn into dominant. And the dominant turn into rare, or even they go to extinction. This is the crew jointly with various and one that explains why we are now in Bangkok. But humans, but humans, Homo sapiens, 
For me, it's so ironically to have the name Homo sapiens. It seems a joke. But humans, divorced of natural mechanisms of regulation, adopted a totally different strategy of temporary survival. I underline this. Temporary survival is not permanent survival. Temporary survival is the exponential curve. We decided, politically we decided, not to have limits. Thus, we reacted the same curve and we adopted the grow without limits. This is our religion. Our current religion is particularly made with money and this curve, uh, this exponential curve. Exponential and money, this is our new and quite efficient religion. And this is, this is us. This is our picture. Hmm? If you see, why different from the sigmoid curve are absolutely far from the pendular equilateral. This is our picture. We work each day, each minute, for having roads. Success is linked with roads. A bakery has success when, not when they, be, they make the best bakery, it's when they have first five shops, ten shops, one hundred shops. One researcher is recognized no by the quality of one paper is when he made more papers during his academic career. Everything, everything in our cultures is exponential. Everything is exponential. At the same time, we rejected the bilateral level. Why? You know, we rejected the equilateral hyperbola of our university, and we replace such hyperbola with simplified ecosystems of extremely low biodiversity. And these are two, two main groups. One is agriculture and capital raising, that is, productive ecosystem with P over R ratio. The, the more important thing is that we destroy high biodiverse ecosystems, for putting inside a new kind of ecosystem with a very small biodiversity, sometimes of one single species, soil, tangentic soil, for example, in my country, one of our cancers, our environmental cancers, and urban ecosystems. Urban ecosystems are extremely short food chain strategies. You know, um, one of the Big errors of humans was inventing agriculture. We cannot change that. It's too late. Agriculture was invented in seven different parts of the world, two of them in currently Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, but this is very important because most of the planets, particularly in uh, outside Antarctica and outside uh, the South Pole, most of the regions are moving from high biodiverse environments to simplify ecosystems. It seems great, funny, interesting, but it's possible to survive with a planet that forms in simple and with small biodiversity in each of them. Humans, particularly rich people, show consumers with exponential consumption pattern as is in the ecosystem equations uh, that analyze this kind of issue. Aggravated by inequity, I, I will insist, our picture is exponential. But our pictures include, as the main issue of our picture, poverty. We are creators of simplification, we are creators of poverty, and we are creators of suffering. Be realistic, most of the world now is suffering. Most of the world is suffering. Most of the people, most of humans are suffering. This is a comparison of kilocalories used in all entire um, sources of energy. While we are an indigenous person, I work with indigenous people in my country, north, northeastern Argentina. 
After 10 years of fight, finally we obtained so the devolution of 4,000 hectares of the asset of land. While we are where the indigenous people spent around 3,000 kilocalories per person per day. One technological citizens of New York spent 400,000 kilocalories per person per year. The same is in Europe. Europe is a big market of the uh, absolutely nonsense consumption, like you say. We created, we developed uh, a calculation, which is the consumption of Mr. Bill Gates. His consumption is 20 million kilocalories. Suddenly, himself. That's what story. Bill Gates decided to visit Antarctica. He sent from the States his own big ship with highest, the highest available technology from the States to Ushuaia, near Antarctica. He take his own plane, a Boeing 767, and he arrived to Ushuaia. And he moved from his plane to his ship, and he visited Antarctica during three days. You understand why he's spending 20 million dollars, one single person. And we need to underline that something is wrong. Something is wrong. When a people is dying in the Sahel, and you have a creator of a lot of technologies spending 20 million kilocalories per day. Um, thus, it is a silent war between exponential will be versus sigmoid will be. This is very important to clarify. This is a myth that uh, there is one single will be or one single happiness. This don't exist. We have different kinds of happiness and we have different kinds of will be. Exponential will be versus sigmoid will be. Exponential happiness versus sigmoid happiness. Unfortunately, the main winners are exponentials. Those people that love exponential are the winners. We have exponential growth of content of information versus adaptive content of information. We incorrectly thought that if we have more information, this is good. Sorry, this is not true. The best is to have information that provides to us adaptation. It's not the quantity of information. Governmental exponential patterns of governance versus governmental sigmoid or adaptive pattern of decision making. Unfortunately, main winners are exponential. This is also a silent war. Exponential or unsustainable religions versus sustainable and sigmoid religions. Religions is one of the more strong and adaptive instruments used by different cultures for survival. Culture is a very important issue for living in our culture. But unfortunately, religions are human sources. And they are also, they also adopted the exponential group. If you go to near Nigeria, if you walk in the street of Port Arthur, you can count, for example, in a single journey, 200 different charges. How these charges work? We do the ESMO. They are 10% of all the money received by people for the church. See? And you will see big palaces. Oh, sorry, which are the owners of these palaces? The owners of these palaces are the heads of these different small scale religions. We have sustainable education versus unsustainable education. We have sustainable laws and regulation versus sustainable. So this is easy and error. We have uh, unsustainable laws 
versus a tiny loss aggregation. And the main winners are also exponentials. The winners continue to be exponential. We have sustainable patterns of production versus unsustainable patterns of production. And you can see this everywhere. Sustainable patterns of consumption versus unsustainable patterns of consumption. We have this example of the kilocalories used by different social actors. And particularly, we have sustainable lifestyles versus unsustainable lifestyles. Hmm? Something is wrong. We result that this different kind of um, lifestyle can survive together. This is possible. Mahatma Gandhi makes a very interesting comparison when interviewed by a people from the United States. He was, they asked him, um, what do you think uh, about um, consumption, about people, about poverty. You think that all Indian people need to have the same consumption of the states or citizens of the states? And Mahatma Gandhi, he was thinking, he taken his time, and he told him, you know, today the states need all the planet for survival. If all the people in of India achieve the same consumption of a United States citizen, we will need eight planets like Earth. Eight planets like Earth. Unfortunately, many winners continue to be exponentially. We are even in a book that was created by Madan Shiva, and she asked me to, to make a chapter. We included the need of convention of lifestyle because we need to, to discuss this. Is it possible to have so uh, lifestyles in so big opposition? People spending 20 million kilocalories and people surviving with that. This complex system works through the mind programming of people, and this is part of the experience. We have minds very easy to be reprogrammed. It's very easy, particularly today, with social networks. Exponential religions, exponential lifestyles, exponential system of production, exponential consumerism, exponential education, exponential law regulation, exponential governance. I need to acknowledge, because I, I, I have been talking directly with Sulak sometimes in different parts. I, I, I am like, uh, uh, I learned a lot about Sulak. And his contributions were very important for clarification of some of our ideas. In this system, there is a new complex, a new complex of mind program shared by exponential pattern of publicity. Um, they are moving you towards their goals. Exponential patterns of news transmitted by media. The concentration of power in media is one of the most important uh, generators of exponentials. Particularly fake news is a new phenomenon. And exponential patterns of information transmitted through internet. Internet is a huge and important instrument, but is also the source, I will be the source of worse problems. All these kind of uh, systems are programming our minds, even mine. It's very difficult to resist this kind of mind programming. And one of the more cruel patterns of exponential, uh, this is, I created this word, I don't think it is in English, exponential involved the growth of one, violence within countries and social groups in the same country, killings, violence between countries, wars, corruption, organized crimes and organized assassination. Take in mind that a lot of our friends that receive the alternative Nobel Prize have been assassinated, tortured for defending people. 
torture, drugs trafficking and drugs consumption, slavery and trafficking of persons, trafficking of real life. If you remember, we have three main businesses in the world. Drugs, weapons, and traffic of animals. The biggest amount of money are managed by, and this is, trafficking of weapons. With, with life, and of course, drugs. Production of and trafficking of weapons, including nuclear devices. Now we are in a planet with the insanity of Mr. Trump. And when we live in a planet with insane presidents like Mr. Trump, we are in danger because he is one of the main responsible of starting a new nuclear career, a new weapons career in the world. Terrorism is also one of these phenomena. Thus, the question is, mm, can we transform exponential culture into a small and more sustainable culture? The set answer is no, we cannot change. I repeat, can we change all this mess, all these problems, all these things? No, we cannot change. But we can reduce the attitude of the exponential. Uh, if we are in this level, we can do this. Can we do this? Yes. And this is the goal of most of the people fighting all over the world and defending human rights, defending the best of our species. We can reduce, but we cannot be transformed in sustainability. I don't like the word sustainability. There is more discussion about that. We cannot transform our current world in a green wine, plenty of Sigmund Woods and the Pegola Ipiateca. This is uh, a tragic poetry. We cannot do this. And such reduction means less human suffering, less casualties, less morbidity, and less mortality. And this is our goal, is to reduce this kind of thing. Um, and the factors of reduction of crisis and suffering involves. And this is very important issues vis-à-vis uh, -vis this a little bit uh, uh, pessimistic, but for me, real uh, scope of our species. The concept of relative adaptation for long-term survival, how to be the concept of adaptive, adaptive happiness and well-being. I repeat, this is not a unique well-being, this is not a unique happiness. This is not true. There is different happiness, different weapons. We need to take a lot to work for having adaptive happiness and adaptive weapons. The concept of adaptive information, because quantitative information doesn't necessarily mean more adaptation. <coughs> this is not true. This is like, like you know, like, like an utopic view that if we have more information, we we will be more adapted. Sorry, this is not true. With more information, we will be getting lost in, in our system of information. Remember that each six year, each six year now, all the entire information, most of them digitalized, because until 2007, most of the information was analogic. Since 2007, is this. Uh, Particularly is uh, the quantities uh, digitalized. Each six years, all the information, all the entire of information of the world is doubled. It's only six years. The concept of adaptive and multilateral education hmm, to destroy the concept that universities are in the top and people is in the bottom. This is not true. This is an academic and social life. People is as important and strong and beautiful and recognizing professors. Mm -hmm. That's the concept of adaptive and multilateral education. We need to learn one of each other. Universities from the people, and people from the universities. 
empowerment of indigenous and non-indigenous popular knowledge. Currently, currently, a lot of indigenous people having crucial information die without transmission of their knowledge. And this is a tragedy because they have key information for surviving. The rising team of university partners of education for being institutional, more sensitive to popular and other non-traditional sources of information. Ibony's powers are one of the uh, institutions that push uh, this cool, this exponential. Real participatory mechanisms of work and interaction between different social sectors. <coughs> Talking of horizontality, not different levels. The creation of new citizens, new new systems of evaluation of country. Um, I need to, uh, to underline this. I reject totally this uh, concept of happiness created, uh, particularly organized even from Costa Rica. This idea of happiness values are scientifically zero. It's technically a mess. Why people from Costa Rica are more happy than other countries? Sorry. Which are the people that make it this? Which kind of human information is mine? I work in Costa Rica and I work with uh, indigenous people. One of my friends got killed of 15 bullets one month ago. What kind of crap is we talking about? Hmm? We need to, to take we can caution about these ideas of happiness, country and happiness. Sorry, this is not exist. There is no happiness. More happiness or less happiness country. <coughs> really, this is uh, absolutely bad thing, it's, it don't exist. In each country we have people that suffer, a lot of people that suffer. And we're talking of Costa Rica is a happy country. Sorry, this is not true. For me, in the mat, working with the people that suffer, you understand that this is not happiness. But you will see in the headlines. Uh, competition, we have countries more happiness than other countries. Sorry, this is not true. Um, the creation. Uh, of this new system of evaluation of country is very important for replacing uh, these bad ways of creating um, of creating these scales of happiness, well being and all these things. And finally, um, this is the aim of the campus Cordova and of the campus of the right allowing to college. Um, through a non-conventional interaction of all these and other variables, because these variables we mentioned previously is solely strong external, it's more complex than this. We are trying to achieve wisdom. Wisdom is the key. Wisdom is the key. Yesterday, when the life of Mahatma Gandhi was analyzed, it's important to know something that people, individual people, but working with all the entire society of their time, they were successful because they worked not with information, not with knowledge, they worked with wisdom. Wisdom, as we will see here, wisdom seems the more human and natural script for reducing suffering and the size of crisis. As I told before, we cannot change, but we can reduce. Arts, sciences, popular knowledge, and social resistance are key universe for this pragmatic approach, because we don't is a quite pragmatic approach. But we need to work together. People coming from different sectors. And finally, because we are at one university, I come from the university. In fact, I don't know which is my tribe. I don't know if my tribe is 
NGOs, universities, or, or being the, the bottom, I don't know. I change all that. But universities are not in the top. And people is not in the bottom. We need to understand this. Hmm? People in universities are no, not small gods. They are solely humans. And sometimes very dangerous humans. Most of the worst things in our uh, exponential society have been developed in universities, like atomic bombs. Atomic bombs were developed inside universities. One of our friends that received the Alternative Nobel Prize, John Goffman, for me, like an idol. John Goffman, she was in the University of Berkeley. I meet him, and uh, well, it was very important for me to meet with him. And he obtained part of the plutonium used in, you know, it was two nuclear weapons um, released in Japan, Little Boy and Fat Man. And one of them was plutonium, because the states not solely use it to box. They use it to different kinds of bombs for looking the effects of plutonium bombs and random bombs. And John Goldman was one of the responsible for obtaining plutonium nuclear. He understood what means this, and he was converted to one of the strong enemies of the nuclear program in the text. Mm -hmm. But you can see a people in this structure that Lots of people inside university thought they are small gods uh, distributing knowledge among poor people in the world. We cannot replace our exponential culture that we can reduce suffering. This is the feeling of misery. We can reduce. And here, what we are doing, we are trying to discuss, to meet, to join us for reducing I don't spend effort for changing the world. For me, this is good. Mm? I have no time to change the world. I am too small. But being small, I can produce small changes. And this is the key. Small changes. When yesterday, uh, so many things of Mad Magandhi have been analyzed, this is a good example. How a person making small things can produce big changes. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, this is a thing that we use it usually because uh, I work with academic side and we work with indigenous people as citizens on the other side in the ground. So the opportunity talk. Sometimes we need to fight, not solely without fear, but also without hope. You know. This is like a, a summary of wisdom. It's very easy to fight when you know that you will be the winners. It's not so easy when you start, like with the dear Guarani, a fight of 10 years for obtaining a success 10 years later. That's a repeat. Sometimes we need to fight not solely without fear, but also without hope. And I think that this is the secret, this is the secret of producing these small changes that, of course, will not, will not change the picture of uh, exponentiality in our countries, but we can reduce. And when, when you are working in the ground, I have been in a camp of refugees in South Sudan, um, I have been working in maybe one of the worst places in the world, in different periods of my life. And uh, I absolutely know that everything can be achieved, but not through big changes, but reducing suffering. And this is our goal. This is my goal. It's not to make big things. No, no, I cannot do it. Big things because I'm very small. I can't.
but we can do small things. And I think that this is the secret, not to lose time. And finally, when I see a planet with all the people talking about climate change, I'm sorry, but, uh, this like me, this producing me a lot of fury. Sorry, this is not the worst problem of the world. Climate change is a typical capitalist uh, issue to produce it, and all the people is dancing with climate change. But our main problem are lifestyles, lifestyle, consumption styles, protection of our university. Hmm? It's funny because you every everybody will to, to fight against climate change. Sorry. But what happens with the 20 million kilocalories of uh, Mr. Gates or the people of the States? Why we are not directing our small work against it? This is the final campus, but I will repeat. Sometimes we need to fight. Not solely without fear, but also without uh, hope. This is all and many things. Thank you so much, Saul. I would like to introduce you to the stage, and we have time for a few questions. I think that many questions has arise from this lecture, so mm -hmm. please have a seat. Some people, killing is happiness. It's 
is very strong. They are not uh, making this because they are contrary <laughs> to their belief. No, no. They are totally convinced that this is a good job to kill people. That's, uh, I think that we need to use relative concepts for uh, having relative results and particularly for living with diversity of happiness and diversity of we beings. It's not bad. Hmm? It's not bad. And I think it's very convenient because we need to make this relation between bad beings, good beings, good happiness and very bad happiness. Thank you. Do we have another question? I think we have time for one more. I think we have one right here. Uh, thank you so much for your comments about universities. I really, really appreciate that. I think it's so important because many people automatically assume that university people know and that they know more and so on. I, I do want to ask you, uh, I don't understand your comment about climate change. Uh, because uh, for me, the, the, the danger of nuclear accident or war and climate change are both very, very big existential threats. And it doesn't mean that all of the other things uh, that are, are not important. I, I think climate change may force us to face the inequality and the, the fact that everyone overlooks the indigenous point of view. So, I just wonder if you could clarify a little bit what you mean that you feel it's, it's maybe a distraction or something. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, can I just, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm Ted Mayer. I work with the International Network of Engaged Buddhists on a school for English, School of English for Engaged Social Service. Thank you. Um, your question is great. Uh, you know that uh, I think that uh, it's linked with all the issues that we arise at. We have a lot of problems. We have climate change, we have uh, loss of diversity, and um, we have increasing violence, increase, increasing number of wars, and the list is a uh, very huge, huge one. Um, I am very critic when this complex uh, situation of complex things some of the issue is put in the top of the agenda and other issues are put sometimes in the bottom or sometimes they are excluded. Mm -hmm. Thus we are convinced that uh, currently there is a complex of situation with different um, possibilities of reducing, using our concept of reducing of change. And uh, it means that you need to have um, to work with different um, amounts of information coming from different sectors, not solely from the side of diversity, but also from the side of uh, uh, grassroots organizations, with assemblies of citizens, with uh, different actors in the society. Thus, I think that currently most of the agendas uh, have been decided by a small group of people and uh, linked with the system of um, uh, transfer of information. Finally, one single issue is a form of the worst uh, issue like climate change. Even when we stop today, all the releases of uh, carbon dioxide and, and other uh, agents having uh, over effects of uh, global warming, because we need to be very clear. We cannot survive without warming. Hmm? The, average of, uh, the average temperature of our planet is 15 degrees centigrade. For surviving, we need global warming. The problem is when you have too much global warming. And this is not what they explain. Hmm? Global warming, we need but not so much in the world. But um, beating the apple, trying to make like a graph, is I think that this different kind of issue need to be revised with this kind of approach. Not solely using the mathematical models of France, which is our previous model of climate change, 
but we need to, you know, to develop this is more open, uh, open-minded and open system of consultation for making analysis. I totally disagree with a more mathematical model created by a group of researchers in France, in Germany, or so on. So, for me, this is a point of view. No more than this. We need much more than this. We need to analyze which are the lifestyles of the German people or the same people that produce it, this pattern. But also we need information for having a more clear picture of the reality. And this is my claim. I said that we cannot reduce um, the producing of information and decision to some elites, elites in university, elites in centers of research, or elites in the United Nations. And this is a small revolution that we try to do, is that, you know, we don't need more information. We need more wisdom. But for having wisdom, we need to have in the same place. Even the most simple, simple people in the table, not solely the big expert. All the climate change uh, issue has been managed by top photographers, top people. Top people, sorry. I prefer not solely this top people. It's how to join people of different sides different uh, specialties in information knowledge and to try and to try to create the wisdom vis-a-vis -vis climate change. Now climate change is not the wisdom is not a wisdom pack. No 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 sorry. Now it's the result of an elect. Maybe this is not the answer to our uh, waiting. But the reality, reality is that I have no and exact answer to your question. But I am trying to say that we need to build this answer. But to build this answer, not <coughs> only with mathematical models, expert, nice people, or beautiful uh, paper published in Richard Gates. Hmm? I think mean, this is a big, big challenge. And this is a just place, the right place. Because I think that during this meeting, a lot of non traditional windows have been opened. And this, I think, the challenge is how to work with so many different social actors. And I think this reduction, the solid way for making is not solely to work with expert uh, academics, uh, professionals. I am totally convinced that the true revolution in education starts with this kind of joint work with open minds to all this system of people. Is it easy? No, no, it's not easy. But you are more near to the wisdom with this kind of work than when you have a panel of experts on climate change. Thank you, Raula. I'm sorry that's all that we have time for now, but you will be around. So we can ask you more questions during the days. Okay. So thank you so much.